Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're talking about the advanced subject of programming displays for your creations. This comes with the conclusion of the build challenge that I hosted where the winners all had or the top three all had very beautiful displays in their creations. Now unfortunately what I do know is that Lua programming, coding, C++, all this stuff is university level courses. I took programming in university and it took me a full semester to gain a basic knowledge understanding on C++ saying hello world on a little display. So I will say if you don't have that skill or that knowledge in your pocket, I would uh, really recommend you to start small. So I'm giving you, I'm going to give you some advice on how you can start small and hopefully one day program something much better than this. I'm super proud of this right now. This is probably my flagship display that I've ever made, but there are much better displays out there. So this is not that great people, um, but I'm proud of it and I'll show you kind of how I created it and hopefully give you some tips on how you can get to creating your own types of displays. First and foremost, I will say that I'm a huge proponent of learning from others' creations. So while I do not encourage stealing, taking without credit, all that stuff, I strongly encourage opening up people's coding and getting an understanding of exactly how something is coded. So you'll find many examples of coding all throughout my vessels so you can use them as a starting point if you want to gain an understanding on how this all works of course sometimes you just have to watch some youtube videos or read some books if people still do that or even look at this help section here because programming is advanced it's an advanced tool coding making displays that's advanced type stuff maybe some of you are naturally gifted at it and that is unreal but i'm not personally that's why i went into structural engineering i couldn't really visualize programming things but here you go this tool here gives you the basics and i'd say you start you should start with some of this and kind of make your way down now there's displays that don't do anything in a sense that there's displays like mine that I just showed you here that its only purpose is to read out the brand so it says AB Marine on this display the reason I have two of them is because they're kind of in shadow one is slightly this one's darker and it sits behind the other one or sorry this one is darker I'm sure some of you guys are laughing at me right now this one is darker and it sits behind this one here so what i learned is that in this kind of lua programming whatever you put first kind of spawns and you stack on top of it so if we were to put something else here you'd actually end up putting that on top of that so if i put here something like this and the reason why you change you could change the colors here so this is something else that you have to learn how to do I'm not gonna say this is where you get them in this video but what you do is something like this and we're gonna put high world and we have this different color we have the same position but if I spawn this into my creation and jump aboard here you will see that it is gonna pop up on the display kind of over top of the whole thing so that white text was over top so I recommend if you are a beginner to programming to start by playing with other people's codes again do not upload anything without their permission but just gaining an understanding of how certain things work changing the colors maybe it's as simple as that that's how I started personally if any of you remember my first helicopter that I made all of these displays were different colors because I actually found a microcontroller for these bottom ones that were white and this was this kind of nice radar green so i left it like that for the longest time but my first real experience programming was just adjusting the colors to make everything match here and then i went went and made these displays for myself and went and used them in my creations so you could see here we got this creation 
and in here there's pretty much two points of information and this I actually will cover in detail how this all works but long story short my first experience was just changing this color so you do want to um, experiment with all this type of stuff I do I highly recommend it if you are a beginner if you're novice if you're just starting off with coding uh, you don't have to get into maps and crazy stuff. There's people that are experts as long as you uh, link their map creation in your ship and if they allow that, which is what I do. I don't develop my own radars, my own maps, which maybe I should do, but I really prefer sticking to the bigger picture personally and doing ribs and ROVs and ships and planes and cars. But there's tons of microcontrollers out there. So if your joy is programming and coding this, by all means do it. But for me, it's not. It's more like a means to an end. So I do it to the extent I have to, which there's some things in real life and engineering that I just do because I have to, but not necessarily because I love doing them. So this is one of them. As you see here, we got ourselves this get number function. So this function on tick is get number one. And if you recall back here, it is data input here so composite channel input one is what you put into your data input so anything here in active input one is now read here as alt so what i called alt is my altitude you can name this anything you want i put altitude here and it's my get number one if it was composite channel two this would have to be a two of course if you put a name here like alt alti you have to match it fully in your code here. So this can't be alt, it has to be alt -E. But I'm just gonna stick with alt for now. Now, because they changed the screen sizes in the game, they added the one by three screen, which was a relatively new addition, I'll say, even though it wasn't, but it's very useful to have this. So your W is your get screen width and H is get screen width. So unless you're building something specifically for a certain display size, this is good because then it'll actually take that W and you could actually use the W here instead of a parameter for the text box width, for example, you can say W minus three and it'll be width divide minus three or W divided by two and it will put it right in the center of your display at that point. So that's one of those things that I find useful to know. And then moving on, what you have here is set color now this is your screen color so you can actually change this to whatever it is you may like and the type of coloring this is is rgb but the nice thing about stormworks is it's consistent so what if you for example like this gold color you can use these numbers here and they will pretty much reflect now note that your display is going to be much much brighter so if i want to have for example a gold background I have to do something like maybe like this. So let's try 80, 80, 55, 0. Okay. 80, 55, 0 inside our display once I can find it. Okay. Oh, no, that's camera controls. There we go. So say we want our background color to be that gold. So we said 80. 55 and 0 and we're going to leave that like that and then we're going to leave everything else as it is but let's see exactly what change we made here so if we spawn up our creation run over all that good stuff toggle the displays there you go so now you may look at it and you may think i don't like that gold i want a really really dark gold you can play around with it but like I said, your st best starting point, because look at that, this color looks nothing like what we just saw on the screen. So the screens are drastically brighter. So if you wanted like a gold, maybe you have to do 30, 15, 0, for example. And maybe that's going to get you the uh, parameter you want. Now, of course, uh, inside your display or inside your microcontroller, what I have feeding it is the uh, like this uh, altitude input, number input, whatever. So you definitely want to have, you're gonna have this, I mean, even for my other one, which is speed, I have this and it multiplies it by 3.6, which is to get it to kilometers an hour. So 
this this uh, helicopter actually I'm using kilometers rather than knots. All my newer ones I'm using knots. And even since creating this, I've changed the displays. I've merged altitude and speed into one because I found there's no need to have them separate. So I'm trying out the 30 and 15. So that's a much darker, better looking gold if you really want, but you'd probably want to change the text color to white. So anyway, this is what I will say is your own personal choice at this point. But again, I highly recommend you start off with not stealing, but using people's existing creations. Use mine, use any of mine. Go in and take a look and learn. Learn how to program this. Because this stuff, even I didn't program. The only thing I did here was change the color. In this little helicopter is actually what I did program. So if you press this here, it's the most simple of displays that just has your uh, height in meters and your speed in knots and just a line through it basic basic display i'm even looking at it now i could do better just right now with my skills but it gets the job done i probably wouldn't take in this uh very harsh white i'd probably put like a gray but whatever again sometimes it's just about getting the job done which brings me to like this controller that i'm super proud of because i programmed all this and you can see it's very similar to the one that i used in the rib in the beginning of the video but I actually adapted it and made it that much better, in my opinion, for the rib. But if we jump to the microcontroller here, you can see that it uses now a bunch of points. So it uses input one, two, three, four, five, and six. So obviously in your Lua, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have all these gears, you have the draw, and then you have a bunch of colors because we have all those rectangles that you see on the screen. Then you get the text boxes with this. So it just comes down to putting what information you want on the display. Now, if you're a beginner, this may all sound very daunting, but it just takes some time and patience. Now, one thing that I'm super stoked about, and I just found this tonight as I was making my rib, and that's what motivated me to make this video, is I found a tool that you don't have to spawn and despawn your creation making minuscule changes every single time. You can use it all in this one interface, this display here. Now granted, I'm still figuring out how to use this tool, so please don't, um, don't get mad at me. And I still, I'll admit, I don't know how to use touchscreen display, how to design or make touchscreen displays, and I don't know how to make mapping and radars and stuff. But again, it, like I said earlier, it's not my thing. But making a simple display like this for my vehicle is enough for me. So if you go here, the nice thing about this tool is you can make live changes and it will reflect right away. And it, it just makes it that much easier. So you can toss in a code here. And if I want to change RPM, RPS, let's say I want to put RPM. Now watch right here where it says RPS. You pause this, hit play, boom, RPM. So anything here you want, you can put, like I said, you could put, get instead of gas, you could put fuel here, for example, and just hit stop, hit play, boom, fuel is there. Maybe fuel is better than gas, it's a more legitimate term. So then on the bottom, we got our little compass. So I have this arrow with the triangle. Now say I'm not happy with the position of the triangle, maybe I want to raise it up or down, and if you look here, we're using... The triangle works with the three-point system, so this middle point here is the top point right here. Maybe I want to make it taller. Let's say I want to go above the north. So right now you can see we're using height divided by two plus six. I'm going to zoom in for y'all because maybe it's a little difficult to see on the display. So we're using height divided by two plus six. What if I try plus ten and then pause and start? Wow, it shrunk, okay? So sometimes, in my opinion, this is trial and error. I knew that it was going to shrink because I've been playing with this for an hour here. But you do want to have the ability to pause and go. There we go. So now we've raised it up. And we can also test it with other things. Maybe I, because the game, this uh, sort of mo website, I guess, I don't know how to select these different nodes. So... Obviously, the compass can say southwest, southeast, northwest. So I'm going to manually just change N here for my own visual purposes to see if this stays centered on the triangle. So if I put northwest, pause, go, 
relatively centered, not perfectly centered, but good enough in my opinion. Like for me, that's fine. So I could delete that W. Again, you pause and go back. And likewise, now you can go and make this whole display. So I highly recommend this website, Pony IDE. Like I just found it tonight. And how I found it was people talking ab about Stormworks on Steam asking for advice. How can I center this point here? Because originally, if my original design that I took from the rat uh, sort of ATV thing, th it was not a text box. It was just a simple draw text. Now, if you draw text, you have to delete this because it doesn't use these points and you have to delete this. So it only relies on an X and a Y coordinate and then the input if you draw text. But if I pause this and go, you can see that the N is here. So I can probably pretty quickly center it. There we go. So that's now centered. But watch if I put Northwest, pause and go. The N stayed in the same spot. It didn't move and it wasn't justified on the center or aligned to the center. And while that's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, I really wanted to learn how to center it. So I found out if you put text box, you can actually um, center it or align it on that text box. So there's just little stuff like that, that you learn through time. If this was me a year ago, I would have been fine with it. I would have been ecstatic about this. So if it isn't a passion of yours, but rather a means to an end like it is for me, I'd strongly recommend sort of starting small, starting with ones you can work with or ones that you can already understand from other people's creations. Maybe someone has a really nice button that you can sort of use and interact with. So it has a touch screen already. You should l at least learn how to change the titles or colors. And of course, give them credit if they allow you to repost your creation using their creation or their microcontroller but it'll at least get you a starting point to where you can make something like this hopefully and be quite happy now you see here this temperature like i don't know how this is aligned to be honest i think i did it the wrong way way back when i did it so it's not yeah it's no it's a text box and it's centered so that's actually good i did it proper the first time around and i'm not sure if i just extracted this code from someone else's creation or not but again when you change it up enough, it's not making anyone money. And I think, in my opinion, if it's changed enough that it, you can no longer recognize the original one, I mean, there's only so many ways to do this. So you can use it and learn. And then as you get more advanced, you'll most likely increase your level of skill and hopefully not have to do that, but rather come up with your own codes. Like for me, I coded this based on something I coded a while ago, made upgrades, all that stuff. So that's exactly what allowed me to build this series of microcontrollers. Now that's just a simple text. Like looking at that, I could probably do better than that, but whatever. And you, here you have all this information and it's quite simplistic. And maybe I do end up adding more stuff, but I always like to put manual controls in my cars at least. But if you turn up the RPS, you can see that increasing. And then of course here you have the gears which is the most important in my opinion to have the gears and that was all a matter of me programming in exactly how to do certain things and when so this is a fairly big microcontroller here that if you have negative one then it's park if you have zero then it's reverse if you have one neutral park manual all that stuff so I'm not just skimming over to show off. I'm just telling you that this took a while to make. And even now I'm like, should it say gas? Should it say fuel? Like you could easily adjust it after the fact. Uh, but there is one other thing I want to show you. And sometimes you may see people putting images inside their uh, displays. So you turn the display on or whatever, and it's like a pixelated image. So it's not drawn by coding per se, but it is drawn by this amazing website. So this website here, um, I'm going to put the link below as well. You can end up creating images for your displays. So I went ahead and uploaded this familiar image. I'm sure most of you know this one. And it is now rendering. So it does take some time if it's a super large image. Obviously, you can use Photoshop or Word or Paint or something to make smaller versions of your image. And that's probably going to go a little bit easier for you and faster as they're already pixelated rather than having to rely on the software here to pixel this one. 
but off it goes. What I ended up doing is creating a very small version of my image. You could see it right here. And pretty much this image now ends up with 2000 characters. So it was just one of those things that you have to sort of shrink or miniaturize your images in order for it to be um, acceptable in the game. Otherwise you'll end up crashing the game. I don't like to make laggy creations. So what I'm gonna do is just create, take all this and simply copy it. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to insert it in to the Lua script here instead of my buckle truck name. So now it's actually just going to load up this and I'm going to increase this like five seconds and see if this worked. But pretty much as soon as I turn the key, you should see an image of me and then the rest of the screen. So clearly that's a very tiny pixelated version and that's not good. Like you don't want to have it be like seven pixels by seven pixels, but I'm, I shrunk it that much just to prove a point. So if you do want to use it in your own creation, you have to kind of fiddle with the website, go back and forth and get an image that you want working. But in essence, you can input images that way. I just would recommend being very careful before you kind of exceed the limit and make it super laggy but regardless there you have it kind of a very basic but yet advanced topic that we discussed here the lua programming so hopefully this helped you maybe encouraged you to try playing around with the lua coding at least a little bit and ideally one day you can program all kinds of cool stuff but until then um, even just using and understanding others' codes is very good in itself. I think that's a co an accomplishment in itself to just be able to, to do that and have kind of the ability to adjust them as needed. So, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more creations, for more content, and as always, happy Stormrixing, everyone.